Michelle, why don't you tell us about Common Space Reciprocity Licenses? Yes, um, well, the, the Common Space Reciprocity License is kind of, um, it wants to offer a solution to a particular problem that we face, which is that the existing sharing licenses, like the general public license, do not allow the creation of a, of a real cooperative ethical counter economy. And let me explain this, and I start with a bit of a provocative uh, thesis that the more communistic the license, the more capitalistic the practice. So if you look at the license which says everybody can use it, then also big multinationals can use it. And for example, IBM will then be using Linux. Um, but what is the problem? The problem is that, a, that a, uh, somebody who contributes to a commons cannot create a livelihood that's connected to the commons. He has to become a worker for IBM or, any, uh, or another for-profit company. And so the value is sucked out of the commons into the world of capital accumulation. I think this is uh, something we need to work on. So a commons-based reciprocity license um, tweaks that a little bit. Um, basically what it says is that every common good institution, every non-profit activity can use the, that particular commons. Even self-owned businesses. Um, so it's not a non-commercial uh, license. It's, it's a license that explicitly allows to create an economy around the commons. But then, and then it, it says, for-profit companies who do contribute to the commons can also use that commons. And the reason they can do that is because there is reciprocity. They are contributing something back. So in the case of IBM with Linux, you would actually say, yes, that is possible. But there are many, many for-profit companies who just use the commons without contributing. And from them we would ask, please pay for the use of that license. Now it's something they're used to because they're, you know, they pay for patents and so it's not a big thing for them. But I think the essential thing is not the money. Although that, you know, may create a stream of income from capital to the commons. The, the essential thing is the notion of reciprocity, the notion of a moral economy. An economy, a market that does not externalize environmental, social, uh, and social justice concern. It integrates them, right? So in, it's it's aimed to create a post-capitalist market, a market that is not geared towards uh, capital accumulation and that doesn't externalize, but actually is self-regulated around the, the principle of reciprocity. So what you have to imagine is that you have a community of contributors that contribute to the commons and they constitute ethical economic vehicles, uh, preferably what we call open cooperatives, which are cooperatives that produce open. They co-produce commons as part of their uh, mission. Um, yeah, so the, that's the idea and if we don't do this, uh, then yes we have commons, but we can make a living from the commons and, and, and or we can only make a living through capital accumulation. And so the basic idea is to have commons accumulation, open input, participatory process, commons oriented output. But in, in between capital and the commons we have cooperative accumulation. So the same people who contribute to the commons create their livelihoods and the value is kept within the same sphere so we can start reinvesting in ourselves and in the infrastructure that we use for the commons. So we have real commons accumulation and what some people call self-reproduction. We can self-reproduce ourselves within the commons. And that's the aim of that license. Now there is one that exists that is called the Peer Production License. It was developed by Dimitri Kleiner, a German. Um, and it's, it's a good license, but it's um, it uses a bit of harsh antagonistic language and also is exclusively geared towards workers' co-ops and we want to extend it to other forms of the ethical economy.